Hands-on, how I get my inspiration. Welcome to this hands-on section. Let's say I'm going to design a corporate website. The first thing I do is, of course, read the brief very carefully and think about the client's needs. I won't go into a specific case because each project is different, so I'll just run you through the steps like we have a real brief in front of us. I'll open up Google and I'll write Corporate Web Design Inspiration. Just in case my results aren't up to date, I can write 2013 or 2014 at the end. Alternatively, I can use these search tools to limit my results for the past year. You don't want to look at galleries from 2008. So we have our main results and we're going to start drilling through them at quite a fast pace. We're looking for something interesting, but I don't have any specific ideas in mind. The whole process is about brainstorming and rapidly deciding if a website looks great or not. I'm using my mouse scroll to open up links in a new tab. In general, we're going to see galleries, and each thumbnail requires yet another click in order to get to the final site. I've already pre-selected some results because your search may vary depending on when and how you do it. So my main links are these. webdesign-inspiration.com vandeleydesign.com webneal.com dtelepathy.com from the first link, I opened the first eight sites. CACPRO.com Optimo.com CampaignLabs.com Andy-Wolf.at ViewBB.com SocialBlood.org Micra.ch BrandAidDesignCo.com and now we're going to browse quickly through them in order to see which one stands out as a whole or if certain elements catch our eye. CACPRO seems decent. Optimo is far too out there, so close it, it doesn't interest us. Campaign Labs looks nice. Andy Wolf, close it. View BB is too polarising, meaning some people might love it, but some might hate it and that's not okay with our corporate client, so close it. Social blood is nice. Micra, close it. Brand Aid Design Co. is okayish. So now we have a filtered list of results and we're going to refine it even more. CACPRO has this nice slider which uses a full width image covered by a colour. In this case it's blue. I really like the way they combined the fonts up top. We might use that idea. What I'm not too keen about is the lack of lines in the first slide. In general, I like to have at least some elements line up. Imagine a vertical line at the left side and you'll see nothing lines up, not even the D and B from digital and branding. In total, there are four vertical lines here for four elements. That could have easily been three or even two. So we might use this idea, but in a bit more refined way. I'm also going to inspect the element by using F12 or by right-clicking and selecting Inspect Element. This is a feature both Chrome and Firefox have and it's really useful when you're trying to get some information about the site you're looking at. We can see the font is Muso Slab at a weight of 900. That translates into bold. By using this method, you're far more likely to see this naming system. 200, 300, 500, 700, 900. That refers to its appearance and it translates into ultralight, light, normal, medium, bold, etc. By switching tabs, we can see additional information. We can notice the size is 73 pixels. Now don't be fooled here, I'm not looking at this tab in order to copy it pixel by pixel, I'm trying to get a sense of their thought process and their proportions. We can also mark they didn't use a drop shadow on their text because they have enough contrast from the blue background. We'll see if we manage the same thing. In general, it's better to avoid drop shadows because it tends to look more elegant. That was a lot to talk about, and it was just one hero area from one website. But I really want you to understand my thought process. Moving on, we see lots of space between these text lines. That's called line height in CSS, and in Photoshop it's called leading. We'll be sure to use plenty of that. Otherwise, we have these nice backgrounds, from blue to white to light grey, to white, to grey again. It really looks nice and professional. We might use that too. Moving on to campaignlabs.com. 
We have a beautiful font up top with four lines of body text. I'm dying to see what font they use. Let's inspect it. And it's Musio Sans 300 regular, 40 pixels. Absolutely beautiful against this contrasting background. This may be the one we're going to use. Moving down, I really like this grid of icons. They're not very intricate, but the way they're laid out, the spacing, the font usage, the blue background, everything seems to be brought together very well. Notice they didn't use white icons. Instead, they went for another shade of blue. They didn't want them too bright, too outstanding, so that's something to note. No real footer, unfortunately, just a minimalistic one. Let's move on. Social blood is a bit on the conservative side. The hero area up top doesn't win any awards, but it still looks pretty good. Clear call to action, decent font, but overall a bit bland. It lacks character, which might be a good thing for their particular cause. Scrolling through their site, I can see they use lots of white space with these one pixel grey lines. Let's check their colour by inspecting them. We can see border bottom, one pixel solid CCC. This is why it doesn't hurt to know at least a bit of CSS. So if we're going to use some dividers, we know this colour looks great on a white background. Noted. Moving on. No footer here, but a strong call to action yet again with this Get Started button. This is present throughout the site. For us, that's not very helpful, since the client isn't looking for a site that generates leads. But in this inspiration process, you have to observe every detail. Finally, Brand Aid Design Co. I said this looks okay-ish because it's a polarizing website. This works great if you're a design company, as they seem to be, but for us, this vivid hero area is not going to work, nor will these otherwise lovely icons underneath. What I do like is this testimonial section. I like the red stars, the font usage, and the call to action. The arrows are a nice touch too. What I would change is the size. So if we do use this idea, we might make it more compact. And that's about it. This is where I'm going to end this video. The idea is you should continue to browse around and explore other websites. Get several ideas going. Don't jump on the first thing you see. I'd like you to send your comments for the next few sites. I know we don't have a complete brief, but let's say our client is looking for something like this. So a website that caters to other businesses directly. More of a presentation website. This is of course very image heavy, but the client isn't very set on that. He does like this page very much. So that's your task. To continue this inspiration process I just went through and write down what you think about the following websites. From VandeleyDesign.com you should analyse the following. JourneyGroup.com Roll.com Wooten.com.au Elephant-Group.com DealGroup.com Spectre-Agency.com from webneal.com, we aren't going to get into anything because their browsing experience isn't good enough. From dtelepathy, you should visit the following. surlaroutencore.com, dropbox.com, budnitsbicycles.com, freshproduct.at, oakley.com, thrivesolo.com. It's really important you do this exercise and write your thoughts for each website. This is how you'll get better. It's not a matter of how great your notes are, it's all about practicing. So please take the time to do it.